Hey guys, Matt here. This is my review of the 2013 version of Old Boy. This movie is directed by Spike Lee, who previously directed Inside Man and The 25th Hour. This movie stars Josh Brolin, Elizabeth Olsen, with Charlotte Copley and Samuel L. Jackson. The plot of this movie is Josh Brolin plays a man named Joe Doucette, a real jerk, a real selfish guy, who is mysteriously imprisoned in this unknown location for 20 years. And when he's miraculously released, he tries to find out who imprisoned him and why. But the path to vengeance isn't so easy. For those of you that don't know, this version of Old Boy is a remake of a movie by the same name from 10 years ago. It's a Korean film. And basically what Spike Lee did with this version is he did what Darren Aronofsky did with Girl with the Dragon Tattoo, where he pretty much remade the same exact movie, changing minor things here or there, and just cast American actors for it. So he pretty much Americanized this Korean film. Now, I will be doing a video a little later on comparing this new version with the original because there were some things that I liked and some things I didn't like. But overall, Josh Brolin did a good job, you know. From the beginning of the movie, he plays this real jerk, and he's out of shape, and then when he's released, he's totally, you know, ripped, and he's toned, and he's serious, and it just makes me think the whole time I was watching the movie, this guy could have played Batman. Elizabeth Olsen, as the girl he meets, also good job. Her role was small, but she did a fine job. Charto Copley is also in this. He's a good actor, but I felt his character was a bit one-dimensional, but he kind of had to be, so as the, the sinister bad guy in the movie, he played a fine job. And then Samuel L. Jackson. When the trailer for this movie first came out, I thought Samuel L. Jackson was going to be the bad guy, and I was like, great, we don't need Samuel L. Jackson playing another villain, because we saw this spirit, and he wasn't too great in that, so I'm glad he had a minor role, but I think he was only in this because Spike Lee wanted to work with him again, but there's nothing wrong with that. So... Overall, you had this movie that was Americanized, and because of that, you took away a lot of the clever shots where you'd have one scene over here, the script, the screen would be split down the middle, you'd have, you know, a backstory going on over here. you have a lot of things that were different, and I kind of felt like Spike Lee wanted to put his own twist or his own brand on this movie, but it's like, if you want to remake a classic Asian film, don't do it, because it's not going to work. In this movie, unfortunately was proof of that. I felt Spike Lee simplified this story. He didn't have his characters, you know, together having a conversation. You didn't get to see any of the characters and how they act and how they are behind closed doors. You didn't get to see any backstory. You just saw black and white characters. This person does this. This person helps them. This is the bad guy. This is what they're doing. This is what they're going. And it's simplified. You don't get any real emotion or backstory besides the flashbacks of any of the characters, and that's what made the original so dark and so gritty, because you knew these characters, you knew who they were, what they were doing, and their motives. And I do give Spike Lee credit, because he did have the scene where the main character takes on 20 to 40 guys in a hallway in one shot, which was cool, and he does have nods and acknowledgments from the original, including the slash marks and the umbrella and the tongue, but he basically took this Korean movie that was dark and disur disturbing, and he made it so American audiences could enjoy it more. He made it so the ending was different. It wasn't as dark and dreary. He made it so American audiences could watch this movie and not go, oh my gosh, that's disgusting, I don't understand it, I hate this movie. He took out the self-mutilation scene, and he changed the octopus eating scene, and even the hypnotist, and all the hypnotism, and so I felt like he simplified it, and he made it so American audiences could go, okay, wow, that was a crazy shock and twist, but the ending was, okay, understandable. And to me, that takes away from the film. It takes away the darkness. It takes away everything the characters do and why they do it. So because of that, because this remake from a classic director wasn't as great as I hoped it would be, I'm going to give this version of Old Boy a C. So until next time, guys, see ya. For those of you that have seen the original and know that Old Boy is part of a trilogy called the Vengeance Trilogy, unfortunately, I heard they are remaking Sympathy for Mrs. Vengeance and Sympathy for Mr. Vengeance. So I hope another director takes those on because we don't need a badly remade trilogy. See ya.